Welcome everyone to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Iceberg. This video will delve into various levels of Modern Warfare 2 trivia, ranging from widely known facts to obscure and downright insane entries. You guys have been absolutely loving the Golden Age Call of Duty Icebergs that I've been producing, so of course I'm going to continue the series. We've covered COD 4 and World at War, but now it's time to dive into what is arguably the most loved and adored Call of Duty game by many, Modern Warfare 2. This one, the 2009 Modern Warfare 2. Not whatever the hell this is. Get that away from me. We're gonna be here for a little while, so feel free to grab some snacks and drinks, relax, throw on a video game, do some homework, and maybe help this video reach 75 likes if you're feeling extra nice today. But without further ado, let's get started. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. Ghost's death. One of the most heartbreaking scenes in any Call of Duty title takes place at the end of the mission, Loose Ends, when General Shepard kills both Roach and Ghost before taking the DSM and lighting their bodies on fire. By the time Captain Price is able to warn the two of Shepard's betrayal, it's too late. Be sure to press F to pay respects. No Russian and the controversy. Without going into too much detail because this entry is pretty self-explanatory, in the campaign mission No Russian, Joseph Allen goes undercover and infiltrates Makarov and his inner circle as they conduct an attack on Zakayev International Airport. Although it seemed like trust was earned, Makarov kills Joseph Allen knowing that he was undercover and uses his body to shift the blame of the attack to the United States. Because of this controversial level, many media outlets were quick to call out Activision and Infinity Ward for allowing such a grotesque and vile mission in a video game. No Russian was so graphic that it had to be censored in a lot of international releases. Activision even had the entire level removed from Russian versions of the game, and the Japanese version would give players a game over screen if they partook in the attack. Apparently the mission was a very hot topic for Infinity Ward employees during its development as well. What also didn't help this mission was the fact that gameplay of the level leaked online prior to the release of MW2. IGN and other gaming outlets reported on the leak footage stating that it leaked in France and that the video was being taken down everywhere. Ultimately, the decision to allow players to skip the mission or just not partake in the attack was added just so people wouldn't be punished if they became very uncomfortable at the idea idea of being involved in this attack. To this day, No Russian is regarded as one of the most infamous levels in any video game and is still a talking point for many. Spec Ops Spec Ops, first introduced in Modern Warfare 2, is a game mode featuring both solo and co-op gameplay that allows players to dive into 23 intense missions with the goal of completing the main objective as quickly as possible. The higher the difficulty, the more stars a player earns. The Spec Ops feature was created by Infinity Ward after trying to add co-op gameplay into the campaign. Infinity Ward apparently wanted to keep the spirit of all gillied up alive by making missions that encourage players to work together. However, the developers realized that it wasn't as fun making single-player missions co-op compatible, but instead of scrapping the idea, they added a third mode to the game, allowing players to hop into various missions with a friend. Teddy Bears Teddy bears are probably the most well-known easter egg in the Call of Duty franchise. Stuffed teddy bears can be found throughout most of the franchise like in campaign missions, multiplayer maps, and of course zombies. And to no one's surprise, teddy bears make a return in Modern Warfare 2. If I'm being totally honest, we would be here for a good while if I were to show you every single teddy bear location in Modern Warfare 2. So, to save time, here are a couple of examples. In the campaign mission Exodus, there is a teddy bear chilling inside of the panic room. And of course, there are a ton of bears located on the very top roof of the multiplayer map, High Rise. Burger Town. Burger Town is the fictional fast food restaurant within the Call of Duty universe, which was first spotted inside of Modern Warfare 2's campaign, specifically the missions No Russian, Wolverines, and Second Son. The restaurant could also be found in the Spec Ops missions Body Count, Homeland Security, and Terminal. The restaurant is also included in the Terminal multiplayer map, and in the remastered campaign, a small Burger Town can be found inside of Firebase Phoenix. Museum. 
Museum is a level within Modern Warfare 2's campaign that is only unlockable upon completing the story, or if you do the cheat code, but we'll talk about that later. Taking place in a museum in Encino, California, this level allows players to explore three rooms containing exhibits for vehicles, characters, and weapons featured in the game. Within the character rooms lies a desk featuring a nice shiny red button. Just be sure not to click it, because if you do, all hell breaks loose. If you, uh, I don't know, happen to accidentally click the button, well, I just hope you stocked up at the weapons showcase beforehand, because as soon as you click that button, it's just, it's nuts to butts, baby. Map Packs Throughout Modern Warfare 2's life cycle, Infinity Ward released two downloadable map packs for 15 freedom dollars. The first of those two packs was the Stimulus Package, which was released on March 30th, 2010 for the Xbox 360 and around a month later for PlayStation and PC users. The Stimulus Package included the multiplayer maps Bailout, Salvage, and Storm, along with Crash and Overgrown from COD 4. The second DLC map pack was titled The Resurgence Pack, which released on June 3rd, 2010 for the Xbox 360 and again around a month later for the PlayStation 3 and PC. The pack included the maps Fuel, Carnival, and Trailer Park, along with Vacant and Strike from COD 4 as well. Killstreaks the Killstreak system received a massive upgrade in Modern Warfare 2. In previous titles like COD 4 and World of War, players were limited to three standard killstreaks. The first streak was three kills, the second streak was five kills, and the third and highest streak was seven kills. However, in Modern Warfare 2, players were able to choose up to three streaks from a massive list of streaks. And a lot of these streaks go way beyond seven kills. These streaks included the UAV, the Care Package, Counter UAV, Sentry Gun, Predator Missile, Precision Airstrike, Harrier Strike, Attack Helicopter, Emergency Airdrop, Pavolo, Stealth Bomber, Chopper Gunner, AC-130, and the EMP. Tactical Nuke in Modern Warfare 2, there is a secret multiplayer game-ending killstreak called the Tactical Nuke. If a player manages to get 25 kills in a row, or 24 with the hardline perk equipped, without dying, they will be able to call in a nuke, massacring all enemies on the map and ending the game with a victory. Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered on March 31st, 2020, during Modern Warfare 2019's life cycle, Activision released the remastered campaign for Modern Warfare 2, which also came with a classic ghost bundle for Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone. Phenox, being the primary developer behind the remaster, took the original campaign and not only made it look extra crispy and clean, but also added in a bunch of new easter eggs, special melee attacks, cheats, and more. Soap gives Price his pistol back. One of the most iconic moments in the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare trilogy is when Soap hands Captain Price his pistol back. In the COD 4 Modern Warfare mission Game Over, Price slides Soap his pistol in order for him to eliminate Imran Zakayev. Once the duo are eventually reunited in the Gulag in MW2, Soap hands Price that same pistol back. First Sequel MW2 marked the first time in the Call of Duty series where a sequel to a previous title was created. The Secret Spots in Multiplayer Secret in quotes because most of these locations aren't really secret anymore. In fact, they haven't been secret for over 10 years now, but they're still cool and I want to highlight some of them. There are endless amounts of cool spots to check out on high rise like the rooftop, the crane, and all of these other cool places on screen. There's the famous top of the plane glitch on terminal, which I've probably only ever achieved once in my entire life because I'm dumb and impatient. Then we have all of the other glitch spots like on Skid Row, Karachi has a few. I believe there's also a secret room on Quarry. I mean, we could be here for hours talking about these secret spots and only just scratch the surface. Double XP Weekends You know life was good when former IW community manager Robert Bowling would announce a double XP weekend for MW2, and it was such a fight to make it through the week just to be able to stay up with friends for like two or three nights to grind out multiplayer and have a great time. Bingo, bango, bongo, that was layer one. Okay. I'm I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. Iconic soundtrack. The Modern Warfare 2 OST was composed by Hans Zimmer and Lorne Balf. The soundtrack consists of 17 beautifully crafted songs that completely elevate what is already a top tier video game. The main theme was composed by Hans Zimmer while Lorne Balf scored the rest of the tracks. 
MW2 maps remastered for Modern Warfare 3 2023. Sledgehammer Games' Modern Warfare 3 2023, aka the latest Call of Duty game, features all 16 MW2 2009 multiplayer maps remastered. A lot of these maps, like Rust and Terminal, have been remastered or remade time and time again throughout COD's history, but a lot of the base MW2 maps, like Underpass and Skid Row, have never received a remaster before. Sledgehammer did an incredible job updating these maps and giving them a nice splash of color. These maps, in my honest opinion, still play very well even on Modern Warfare 3 with the updated movement. Except Underpass, but I I've always hated that map. No offense to all my Underpass lovers out there, it's never been my cup of tea. Special Editions It wouldn't be a Call of Duty game without Activision releasing a bunch of various special editions to entice consumers into spending just a little bit more. So besides the standard edition of Modern Warfare 2, there is also the Hardened, the Prestige, the Veteran, and the Saga editions. The Hardened edition came with the base game as well as a steelbook case, an art book, and a free code to download the original Call of Duty game. The Prestige edition came with everything included in the Hardened edition as well as a pair of night vision goggles and a base-mounted head of soap. The Veteran Edition, which was a UK exclusive edition, came with the hardened edition of the game along with a really cool Soap McTavish statue. Lastly, there was the Saga Pack, which not only came with the standard edition of Modern Warfare 2, but it also came with a copy of COD 4. While we're on the topic of special editions, a very unique Xbox 360 Modern Warfare 2 bundle was also available to purchase. The bundle featured a copy of MW2 along with an Xbox 360 console featuring some MW2 graphics on it. The bundle of course came with two controllers, a 250 gigabyte hard drive, and a headset. 250 gigabytes? Jesus, these days you need like a 5 terabyte SSD just to install and run Warzone. Okay, I'm exaggerating a lot, but you guys know what I mean. Games are getting bigger. Behind the Lines, The Art of Modern Warfare 2 Behind the Lines, The Art of MW2 is an art book featuring tons of concept art for current and scrapped levels as well as how Infinity Ward handled different parts of the game's development. The book was released as part of the hardened prestige and veteran editions of Modern Warfare 2, and of course the book is also available separately. Secondary Shotguns in most Call of Duty games, shotguns are always primary weapons. However, Modern Warfare 2 was the first of a few entries in the franchise to make shotguns secondaries. Other titles that have done this are Black Ops 4 and Cold War. Overlord is the new Shepard. The original Overlord in MW2 2009 was voiced by actor Glenn Morshauer. Hunter 2 1, all air support is already engaged. Glenn would later go on to play the new version of General Shepard in the rebooted Modern Warfare series. Minus the mustache. I, I don't know why they didn't give him the mustache. Kind of disappointed, but it's whatever. Precognitive Paranoia Precognitive Paranoia is a trophy or achievement earned in the remastered MW2 campaign after shooting Shepard in the mission SSDD. This achievement is basically like Time Paradox from Modern Warfare Remastered, except the mission will restart if you kill Shepard. Infinity Ward's Implosion not everything was all sunshine and rainbows at Infinity Ward during Modern Warfare 2's life cycle. And to briefly summarize, since there are a lot of details to the story, according to Vanity Fair, after the success of COD 4, Activision desperately wanted another Modern Warfare title. With Infinity Ward's contract with the publisher about to expire, Bobby Kotick, former Activision CEO and renowned pile of shit, gave studio founders Jason West and Vince Zampella creative control and a huge bonus plan in exchange for IW to release a new Modern Warfare title in 2009. However, Kodak implemented a little loophole in the poop hole. If West and Zampella were fired, the game rights would be given to Activision. And it was soon reported afterwards that Activision higher-ups were allegedly attempting to find any reason to fire the duo and take control of the franchise. Months after MW2's release, Jason and Vince were told by Activision that they could not return to their offices, were forbidden to talk to their former colleagues, and would not be given the $36 million in bonuses and royalties they were expecting. The two eventually went after Activision for wrongful termination in an attempt to recover the money and control of their baby. They soon followed up with the news that they founded a new studio titled Respawn Entertainment under EA. A large portion of Infinity Ward staff eventually left to join West and Zampella. 
Activision then filed a countersuit against the duo. Other former and current IW staff at the time under the name Infinity Ward Employee Group also jumped into a legal battle with Activision for unpaid bonuses. Ultimately, Activision settled with the employee group and private settlements were reached between Activision and EA and with West and Zampella. The remaining IW staff who weren't fired or left the studio continued to work on MW3 but were aided by Sledgehammer Games, Raven Software, and partially by Neversoft. That's basically like the spark notes of what happened but there's way more to this story and I'm probably leaving out a couple of very important details so forgive me for that. But again this is like the condensed version. I would highly recommend checking out the Vanity Fair article if you want to learn more. Wikipedia, I know Wikipedia isn't necessarily the most reliable source, but it does a decent job at explaining the situation as well, and it also provides sources too. So just give it a read in your free time if you want to learn more. The most iconic and busted multiplayer experience. MW2's multiplayer is without a doubt the most popular multiplayer experience within the community. A majority of Call of Duty players will tell you that these six games were the golden age of Call of Duty, but MW2 was the franchise's peak. The game had it all. Amazing maps like High Rise, Scrapyard, Terminal, Afghan, Quarry, and Rust. <laughs> 1v1 me bro. Incredible and very fun to use weapons like the Intervention, the ACR, the UMP, and the Model 1887. The endless list of streaks, perks, I mean this game took the formula of COD 4 and expanded it to hell and back. However, MW2 was not perfectly balanced. In fact, a lot of the same players remember MW2's multiplayer for being a broken mess. I mean, Jesus, where do I even begin? The infamous pre-patch Akimbo Model 1887s were super busted. Let's not forget about one-man army noob tubes. I mean, Jesus, that combo could easily turn an entire army into dust. There's also the javelin glitch, which made players into walking bombs. Commando lunges, which ultimately turned players into Edward F Cullen whenever he smells blood. The care package marker glitch, which made players run faster to marathon sprinters. Apparently, there was a way to get inside of the giant rock on the map of fuel, which I didn't even know about until recently, mainly because I didn't own the DLC for the game at that point. Ah, uh, did I miss anything? Of course I did. There's too many things to list. But let's circle back a little bit. There's some cool stuff we could talk about. While we're on the topic of multiplayer, I should mention the very rare, yet super satisfying Stinger kills. So the Stinger in MW2 was a launcher only usable on enemy killstreaks. However, there are some documented instances on YouTube showing players getting real kills with the weapon. And if you think that's cool, there's also the rare chance that either you or one of your squad members managed to knock out an AC-130 with a Predator missile. Pat yourself on the back, soldier, because I know you did it, and it was awesome. Look, there are a lot of reasons to love MW2. The graphics are still good, the gameplay's great, the nostalgia and fond memories are a factor too, and in my honest opinion, I believe that MW2's broken and unbalanced elements also play a huge role in why people worship this title like an idol. Those busted weapons and glitches made the experience a very entertaining nightmare, but damn, a lot of those bugs would not fly in today's games. Intel Cheats in MW2R Intel existed in the original MW2 campaign for players to collect, but with Modern Warfare 2's remastered campaign, Intel, just like with COD 4 and MWR, grants players the ability to enable cheats. After unlocking all 45 pieces of Intel, players will be able to replay missions with the following. Bombshell, which makes enemies drop a grenade when they die. Precision, which makes enemies only vulnerable to headshots. Green Beret, which gives players only a knife and doesn't allow the ability to reload weapons. Fortitude, which makes enemies tougher to kill. Desperation, which makes it so the player cannot regenerate their health unless they hit an enemy. Poltergeist, which makes enemies, except for dogs, invisible. Attraction, which reduces damage over distance. And Starvation which makes ammo deplete over time and can only be stopped by killing enemies. Then we have the fun cheats like pineapple heads, which replaces enemy heads with pineapples, think fast, which turns grenades into soccer balls, a bad year, which turns enemies into tires, cluster bombs, which turns one grenade into many, pomegranade, which turns grenades into pomegranates, party time, which turns enemies into confetti, danger close, which turns all enemies into general shepherd, slow-mo ability, which allows players to move in slow motion, ragdoll impact, which sends enemies flying through space and time when killed, infinite ammo which grants the player with unlimited ammo, cod noir which turns the player's screen black and white, edge detect which makes my eyes want to scream, oh my god it's so bright, and lastly ragtime warfare which turns a player's modern warfare 2 experience into a silent film.
Call of Duty Modern Warfare Mobilized. Modern Warfare Mobilized is a Nintendo DS title which was released alongside MW2. Developed by Endspace and published by Activision, the game features an alternate reality campaign which takes place five years after COD 4, and a six-person multiplayer mode that features game modes like Sabotage, a survival mode, and even an arcade mode where players can complete the campaign mode within a certain time frame for points and achievements. Monster Energy Partnership in 2009, Monster Energy partnered with Activision for the MW2 season. Inside of special marked monster packs were codes that players could redeem on the monster website for prizes like the hardened edition of the game, exclusive console themes, and even a future map pack. Gold Desert Eagle in Modern Warfare 2 Remastered on the mission of their own accord, there is a teddy bear hiding in room 1 in the starting area holding a golden desert eagle with a total of 7 bullets in the clip, which I think is supposed to be a reference to GoldenEye 007, but I could be wrong. Booyakasha! That was layer 2. I'm gonna go get dinner now. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. MW2 Multiplayer Gameplay Uncut Flag Runner on August 28, 2009, Infinity Ward uploaded the iconic video MW2 Multiplayer Gameplay Uncut, which shows a match of Capture the Flag on the map Favela. Mom, get the camera. On July 29, 2011, a YouTube channel named Brighton's Big Day uploaded a video titled Mom, Get the Camera. Mom, get the camera! This video not only features one of the greatest throwing knife kills in the history of Call of Duty by C8 Swap, but it also sparked a ton of memes. There are a lot of insane moments that were captured during MW2's life cycle, and although I'd love to cover them all for separate entries, we have a long way to go in this video. So quick honorable mentions go out to the screaming kid on Afghan, the many host migration trick shots by various players in the community, the dozens upon dozens of toxic lobbies, <laughs> and the countless phase trick shot videos that'll make you say, man, I miss the good old days. Soldier on the cover. So Mark Rubin revealed on Twitter a couple of years ago that he was not only the soldier featured on the cover of Call of Duty 4, but also the soldier on the MW2 cover. According to Mark, he dressed up in military gear, had a bunch of photos taken of him in the studio, and the IW art director at the time, Richard Kriegler, photoshopped the images. Speaking of Kriegler, his name can be seen on the multiplayer map, High Rise. His name is scattered around other parts of the game as well. Royce Wicks' signatures. Just like in certain COD 4 maps, Alexander Royce Wicks, former level designer for Infinity Ward, secretly placed his name inside of several Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps that he worked on along with the year, like Salvage, Quarry, High Rise, and Afghan. IW2009 for license plate. A lot of license plates on vehicles featured throughout MW2 say IW2009-4, which refers to Infinity Ward, the year of Modern Warfare 2's release, which was 2009, and that MW2 is IW's fourth Call of Duty title. Hidden Clowns In the remastered MW2 campaign mission SSDD, there are three clowns scattered outside of the playable area that players can shoot. After completing the tutorial, head to the right side of the target range to find a Barrett 50 cal with three bullets on the table. Then head to these three locations around the map. Aim carefully, take the shot, and watch those clowns explode. Killing all three clowns will give out the clown in training trophy or achievement. Getting called a chicken for backing out of prestige. If a player decides to cancel out of the prestige mode at the last menu screen, a chicken noise can be heard. Special melees in MW2R. Beanox added in special melee attacks into certain points of the remastered MW2 campaign. 
in Cliffhanger, Roach can take out the first two enemies with his ice axes, and later in that same mission, while one of the guards is sleeping, Roach can kick the guard off the chair and slam his head into a table. In the mission, the only easy day was yesterday, Roach can perform a throat attack on the guard leaning against the railing before pushing him over into the water. In Just Like Old Times, Soap can perform a throat attack on the guard having a smoke after Shadow Company Patrol walks out of the cave. Finally, in Endgame, Soap can kill the first pilot that crawls away from the helicopter wreckage, and the second pilots will pull out an empty pistol before Soap finishes him off. Modern Warfare 2 Ghost Modern Warfare 2 Ghost is a six-part comic book series published by Wildstorm, which focuses on the backstory of Simon Ghost Riley, why he wears his signature mask, and more. It's a pretty good read, I'd highly recommend giving it a shot. SM2 SM2 was a Call of Duty project developed by a small group of developers using the MW2 engine before eventually announcing that the game would switch to the MWR engine. The game was intended to be a mashup of all previous titles and was originally planned to be released for free. However, back in 2023, the team received a cease and desist letter on behalf of Activision Blizzard. Yeah, the, uh, the perfect Call of Duty title, made by fans, completely destroyed by the same company who let IW get away with this fucking travesty. Yeah, I'm, I'm still bitter about it, and I'm not gonna stop talking about it, it genuinely makes me upset. MW2 featured on Family Guy at the end of the Family Guy episode April in Quahog, in an attempt to persuade Chris Megan Stewie into forgiving him, Peter buys the family an Xbox 360. However, to no one's surprise, Peter hogs the entire console for himself, and the episode ends with him playing a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer game on Favela and completely ruining the experience for his entire team. What's also pretty funny about this clip is that Peter died from 402, which happens to be Robert Bowling, the stealth clown himself. 50 Cent Voice Cameo It was announced in August of 2009 that rapper 50 Cent would be making several audio appearances throughout Modern Warfare 2, and according to Robert Bowling, 50 was one of the few casual cameos featured in the title, and one of 50's songs can be heard in the mission SSDD. However, you can't hear the song in the remastered campaign, probably because Activision didn't get the rights for the song. MW2 Mad Cat's Controller Robert Bowling, back in July of 2009, revealed that a custom Modern Warfare 2 controller was in the works. Soon after, Mad Cats announced that they partnered with Activision and IW to develop an MW2-esque PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 controller. Wasteland is a remake. Well, as it turns out, the multiplayer map Wasteland is technically a remake of a map featured in Call of Duty 1 and 2 called Brecourt. Both levels feature pretty similar layouts, but Wasteland's landscape is updated to feature some buildings and, of course, miniguns. Porter Justice so Porter Justice is a fake movie poster that can be spotted not just in Call of Duty 4, but also in MW2, specifically towards the back of this alleyway in the campaign mission, The Hornet's Nest. There is also a teddy bear hidden back here along with a kid's drawing. Jesus, this poster is just giving Keanu Reeves Matrix vibes. Now, in the remastered campaign, the Porter Justice poster is replaced with a band poster for a fake music group called Messiah's Atomico. I'm not entirely sure who any of these people are. My guess is that maybe some developers at Beanox photoshopped a fake band poster together featuring some developers to replace the Porter Justice one, but I could be wrong. Here's a question. Is Justice Porter supposed to be former Call of Duty developer John Porter? Maybe somebody could let me know in the comments. I could totally be wrong, but John Porter did work on COD 4 and MW2 along with a slew of other games, so I wonder if this is supposed to be him in the poster or not. There's not really a lot of photos of the guy, so I can't tell. There is also a Porter Justice emblem in the game. If a player kills the number one player on the enemy team 10 times in a single match, they could also be blessed with Porter Justice as well. Yuri Easter Egg 
Yuri was a main character in MW3 who lent Task Force 141 a hand in finding and stopping Makarov. However, what we learned from the campaign was that Yuri was once an associate of Makarov's. Once Yuri realized what Makarov's true intentions were, he tried to put a stop to things but unfortunately failed. Yuri, in an injured state, rode the elevator to the same airport where no Russian takes place to try and kill Makarov and his crew, but soon fainted. Yuri was never seen in the original COD 4 or MW2 because the character wasn't conceived at the time. However, Raven added Yuri and even Makarov into the COD 4 campaign mission all gillied up in MWR, and Binox jumped in by adding Yuri into No Russian. If the player in No Russian turns back around and heads towards the beginning of the level, they can spot Yuri. This is probably one of the coolest easter eggs in MW2R. IW4X IW4X was a PC client for MW2 which hosted dozens of dedicated servers and added in a bunch of weapons, new maps, it featured its own anti-cheat system, you could change your FOV, I mean this client had it all. But back in 2023, it was announced by X-Labs that Activision sent them a cease and desist letter. During this time, Activision was going after basically every modded client for Call of Duty like SM2 for example, which I mentioned previously. X-Labs letter came shortly after, so it was reported that their client for MW2 as well as their other clients would be shut down. However, even after the cease and desist letter, players could still technically play on some of the servers. Even just a few weeks ago, a YouTuber named Steeze, I hope I'm saying that right, uploaded a tutorial on how to install IW4X. So from my understanding, the client is still around, but it's extremely limited. <laughs> and that was layer three. Whoopee. I'm out of breath. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. Terrible Remember, No Russian, translation in Japanese version. By the way, if I don't sound as happy as I normally do in this layer as well as the next one, it's because I'm recovering from laryngitis. I lost my voice, and I'm trying to get it back. 2024 hasn't been too kind to me. Anyways, in the Japanese version of MW2's No Russian, Makarov's iconic line, remember, No Russian, was originally mistranslated to kill them, they are Russians. This massive mistake was later corrected in MW2R. Scrapped Campaign Missions According to the Modern Warfare 2 wiki, four campaign missions were scrapped during development. Tulsa, Downtown LA, International Space Station, and Roadkill. While information on Tulsa is pretty scarce, Downtown LA would have of course taken place in Los Angeles and would have apparently involved the usage of motorcycles. I could totally be wrong, but my guess is that Infinity Ward maybe wanted to make another campaign plot set on the West Coast during the Russian invasion, but perhaps scrapped it because as they either were super busy working on the other missions, or maybe the LA story would have just ruined the flow of the game. There's also the International Space Station level, which was cut from the game for unknown reasons. Maybe because fighting with guns in outer space would have been impossible, or perhaps the developers thought that it was just a little bit too much for an already over-the-top story. Thankfully, however, a brief cutscene from the ISS was implemented into the mission Second Sun. Finally, there's Roadkill. Now, according to the MW2 Breeze Wiki, there is a level file for the campaign mission team player in the source files titled Roadkill, and apparently those two are not the same. This cut Roadkill level would have apparently also featured motorcycles. There is some motorcycle concept art featured in the MW2 art book, and apparently the concept was for an early chase scene in a city, so there is some weight to that claim. There's also a cut Spec Ops mission titled Co underscore Hunted, which is taken from Call of Duty 4. The following gameplay of this mode is from Chooch on YouTube, so credit to them. Speaking of cut campaign content, YouTuber Mr. Jarney uploaded some gameplay of an unreleased arcade mode from MW2. Cut Multiplayer Maps According to the MW2 wiki, there is a decently large list of scrapped multiplayer maps that never made their way into MW2, like Gulag, which would have been based on the Gulag campaign mission, Oil Rig, which eventually inspired the MW3 DLC map Offshore, then there's Vertigo, which was set on top of a skyscraper like High Rise. We also have White House, Crib Basement, an old version of Fuel, Trailer, which eventually released as Trailer Park in the Resurgence map pack, a map titled Riverwalk, we also have Verdict, a map titled Skid Row Raid, or just Raid, we also have Suburbia or Arcadia, which apparently would have 
been based on the Mission Exodus, Plaza, Uprise, Substation, and Mall. There is also a map titled Village that looks pretty similar to Downpour from Call of Duty 4. YouTuber Bozot uploaded a walkthrough of that map if you want to check it out. There is also gameplay for shipment and what appears to be either a test map of sorts or something entirely different titled Firing Range. Not 100% sure if shipment was ever meant to come to MW2 or not, but it exists in the files. Credit to NickCool2901 for uploading footage of these two maps. Zombies Easter Egg in Gulag so I didn't believe this easter egg to be real until just recently when I went back to replay the Modern Warfare 2 remastered campaign for this video and tried it myself. Phoenix snuck in a zombie easter egg into the remastered campaign and it's pretty cool. In the mission, the Gulag, after Ghost unlocks the security door, head over to this cell labeled 227 and throw a grenade through the opening of the door. Once the grenade explodes, head back to the control room, stare at this TV, and prepare to shit your pants in amazement. Scrapped Weapons According to the MW2 Wiki, the AK-74U, the L-85 Assault Rifle, the G-3AR, and the Remington 870 MCS shotgun were cut from the game. The Wiki also states that the L-85 model was modified and updated to be the L-86 LSW later in development. There were also a ton of COD 4 weapons in the files, like the G36C, that are able to be used via mods, but never officially made their way into the final game. YouTuber Mr. Jarney has a ton of gameplay of these weapons on his channel. I'm not sure if they were just leftover assets or if Infinity Ward wanted to bring some of these classic weapons into the sequel. YouTuber Euphoric Vibes also managed to load in some other weird or unused weapons into the game, like the M4 with a cloth for example. And although this isn't technically a scrapped weapon, the Dragonov, while available to use in the campaign and spec ops, is not available in the multiplayer of the game. Cut Perks MW2 had a lot of perks cut from the final build of the game, and I mean a lot. Like you better sit down for this one son, because we're gonna be here a while. Black Box would have allowed for longer killstreak durations, Siege would make the player immobile, but allow them greater accuracy, Amplify would make enemy footsteps louder, Free Runner allowed for faster mantling, Dive would allow the player to jump to dodge bullets, maybe like a dolphin dive of sorts, Spy Game would have removed names above the player or red crosshair when targeted, Burst Fire would have made weapons fire three round bursts, Improved Iron Lungs would have given the player a longer breath when holding Steady. Fiend Death allowed a player to fake a death. Offhand would have allowed players to use equipment in Final Stand. And Jesus Christ, thank God that was cut. Saboteur would have allowed players to complete objectives quicker. Explosive Bullets would have made bullets explode upon impact. Free Fall would protect players from fall damage. Thermal Vision would have made enemies appear white hot. Steel Nerves would have improved marksmanship. Rear View would replace the minimap with a rear view of the player. Challenger would have granted the player extra XP but would make them an easy target. EMP Grenades times 3 would have increased the capacity for EMP Grenades. Primary Stand would give the player their weapon of choice in Final Stand. Also, thank God this was cut because that sounds like pure hell. Flash Grenades times 3 would have increased the capacity for Flash Grenades. C4 Death would have given the player a C4 to pull out before they die which kind of sounds familiar, and Shellshock would have put a riot shield on the player's back. It's really insane how many ideas Infinity Ward had for this game. I could understand why a lot of these perks were ultimately cut from the final build, but some of these ideas would have been pretty interesting to see implemented into multiplayer. Scrapped Killstreaks so the cut kill streak list isn't as long as the cut perk list, but there are still quite a number of streaks that were scrapped from the final build of MW2. It's honestly incredible to see just how ambitious Infinity Ward were with Modern Warfare 2's development. Anyways, the cut kill streaks from the game include a tank, a predator airdrop, an airstrike and super airstrike, which probably just ended up turning into the precision airstrike, an auto grenade launcher, a helicopter black box, a little bird helicopter, some type of shotgun, an advanced UAV, the helicopter MK-19, and a thumper. But I guess IW decided to make the thumper its own weapon in multiplayer. Can't use Intel cheat in no Russian. 
Not surprisingly, players cannot enable cheats while playing No Russian in MW2R. I imagine letting players mow down people with pineapple heads wouldn't be a great look for Activision. Cut Game Modes in total, there were seven scrapped multiplayer game modes from MW2. Those modes were Die Hard, which would have given all players a final stand, and all players a final stand would have been marked as green on the minimap. Arms Race, which is only known about via sound files. VIP, which would have been pretty similar to CTF, however, a player was randomly chosen to be protected by their team. Then we have DEFCON, which just sounds insane. The mode begins at DEFCON 5, with all player stats being normal, and as the game progresses, DEFCON 5 goes to 4, then 3, all the way to 1. When the DEFCON updates, so do the player's stats. So at DEFCON 4, players would go into last stand when shot enough. At DEFCON 3, weapons damage would increase. At DEFCON 2, killstreaks would take one less kill to earn. And finally, at DEFCON 1, a nuke would detonate. We also have Arena, which would have just been TDM, but would only give players one life. And if one player on each team is alive, a flag would spawn and those players would have to fight for control of it. This mode sounds pretty similar to the gunfight mode that's featured in a lot of the newer Call of Duty titles. We also have Global Thermonuclear War, which would have made teams guard a bomb until it goes off. And finally, One Man CTF, which would have just been classic CTF, but with one flag. YouTuber Mr. John Barney also has gameplay of some of these modes up on their YouTube channel if you're curious and want to check them out. Other scrapped multiplayer content and changes. Here is just a random list of other cut or scrapped MW2 content that I found pretty interesting. If I missed any content, which I totally did, or if you even want to elaborate further on an item I listed, then drop some comments below. There was apparently a cut camo pattern titled Blue Cheetah. There's also a light stick or a glow stick that's in the game files. Maybe it was an early version of the tactical insert. Thumpers were going to have an akimbo attachment, which, uh, god, I, I would love to see that. The TMP and PP2000 were going to be primary weapons before being changed into secondaries. The player was originally going to have the option to switch the throwing knife hand from left to right. Dead Man's Hand, for those of you who played Modern Warfare 3 2011, was going to be introduced in MW2, but was cut from the game. YouTuber Mr. Jarney, who I've mentioned several times throughout this video, managed to get Dead Man's Hand working in MW2 by just modifying the code a little bit, and they also have some footage of the throwing knife and the light stick on their channel as well if you want to check it out. MW3 Shepard Easter Egg on Rust so the original and new Modern Warfare sub franchises are not in the same universe. However, there are various parallels between the two. One interesting parallel is that the skull of General Shepard from MW2 2009 with a knife lodged into it can be found on the Modern Warfare 3 2023 remaster of Rust. The Remastered Collection Underneath various pieces of concept art inside of the museum level of MW2 Remastered, there is text that reads, Part of the Remastered Collection. Now, it's not specified what the Remastered Collection means, although people and content creators at the time of MW2R's release have speculated that this was referring to the remasters of COD 4, MW2, and at some point, MW3. However, it's 2024 and we still haven't received MW3 Remastered, and I, I feel like we're just never going to get it at this point. Original Contingency Ending In the original ending for the campaign mission Contingency, the player would have followed Captain Price into the submarine to stop the nuke from launching before sinking the sub. However, Soap would have then authorized Roach to launch the nuke before escaping the submarine. YouTube channel Jerry Alt managed to restore the game's scripts for this mission in case any of you guys want to check it out and see what could have been. Third Person Mode the third person mode was first introduced into Modern Warfare 2 2009. Unlocked at level 19, players were able to dive into the tactical team playlist which consisted of TDM, Domination, Demolition, CTF, and SD, while viewing their character model from over the shoulder. MW3 2011 also featured a third person mode, but it was only available in private matches for some reason. Over a decade later, IW reintroduced the third person mode into MW2 2022, however in this version, the camera will switch from third person to first person when a player is aiming down sight. 
Call of Duty game case in no Russian. Inside of the liquor store at the airport in no Russian, there appears to be some Xbox 360 cases with artwork featuring what looks to be Captain Price along with the Call of Duty logo. This cover of course is much more crystal clear in the remastered campaign. No Russian secret elevator scene. Credit to General Kidd for uploading this footage. Apparently during No Russian's development, there were plans for Makarov to grab Kirill by the throat in the elevator, but that was cut and replaced with just a black screen. Makarov also appears to utter the phrase No Russian right afterwards. So if I had to guess as to what's going on in this scene, I'd say that maybe Kirill was speaking in Russian, which triggered Makarov to shut him up, followed by telling the player to not speak Russian. That's just an educated guess though. What's also interesting is that Makarov does grab Kirill by the throat in the museum level at the airport exhibit. Everyone is doing it. Call of Duty released a pretty hilarious commercial over a decade ago to promote Modern Warfare 2. It features an elderly man on a recliner in his living room talking about how everyone is doing it. How guys are doing it with girls and how girls are doing it with other girls. How sometimes people get together in groups and do it. Now, of course, the older gentleman in the commercial isn't referring to how sometimes people like to partake in the, uh, the, the vile, sinful, and, uh, I don't know, smelly act of intercourse. P.U. <laughs> God, that hurt. No, instead, he's referring to how everyone is playing Modern Warfare 2. What's pretty interesting is that there's another Everyone is Doing It commercial with most of the same dialogue at first, but it stars a totally different elderly man, and it was mainly used to advertise the then-upcoming Stimulus Package DLC. Wait a minute, is that Conrad Bain? It sure as hell looks like Conrad Bain. That might be Conrad Bain. Somebody let me know in the comments. Tango, sucker. According to Know Your Meme, Tango Sucka is a catchphrase which originated from the Arab Op 4 faction of MW2. The term is used in place of Tango Down to indicate a destroyed hostile, but in a more condescending tone. Apparently people began to notice that the Arabic language voiceovers for the Op 4 faction in single and multiplayer sounded like insults in English, with Tango Sucka being the most notable. And I guess because of this, Tango Sucka ultimately became a very popular meme in both the gaming community and I guess just online in general. Space Invader in No Russian. Underneath the elevator inside of the airport in No Russian lies a little Space Invader, which is very obscure. And that was layer four. Man, my body hurts. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. Infinity Ward tried dropping the Call of Duty prefix from Modern Warfare 2. Due to the massive success of COD 4, the Modern Warfare sub-series, according to Activision, had taken on a life of its own. So when MW2 was first announced in March of 2009, the game's title didn't originally carry the Call of Duty prefix. However, according to an article from GameSpot, a study from tracking firm OTX found that customer intent to buy the game had dropped by 20% simply due to Call of Duty not being featured in the title. It's speculated that because of brand awareness dropping, Activision and IW ultimately reversed their decision and brought back the prefix for the game. While the prefix now exists on the standard edition case, it's absent from the hardened and prestige editions as well as the in-game menu. GameStop's surprise attack sweepstakes for five weeks up until the release of Modern Warfare 2, GameStop announced their surprise attack sweepstakes. Customers who pre-ordered MW2 from local GameStops or online would be given a receipt code or confirmation number, which could then be entered up to twice a day on the surprise attack website. Some of the prizes in the sweepstakes included night vision goggles, autographed artwork, a Ducati motorcycle, a Hummer, and more. Piccadilly Attack as I mentioned previously, the Modern Warfare reboot series is not in the same universe as the original trilogy. However, there are a ton of parallels between the two. Another example of this is that in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign mission Loose Ends, there is a newspaper article sitting on a table inside of Makarov's safe house, which mentions an attack on Piccadilly Circus. What's interesting about this is that although we don't see this attack in the old MW trilogy, we do see an attack on Piccadilly Circus towards the beginning of Modern Warfare 2019. MW2 Never Die 
Inside of the briefcase on the campaign mission Exodus, there is a little booklet or paper that reads, MW2, never die. Bonus fact, there are tons of newspapers around MW2 titled the Infinity Ward Times. L-Train. At one point during development, there were plans to incorporate an interactive train for a multiplayer map, but for unknown reasons, the train was scrapped. However, a kill icon featuring the train remains in the files. Underpass Old Lady Easter Egg On July 16th, 2010, YouTuber Dead Ace Films uploaded one of the biggest hoaxes in Call of Duty history. They released the video Modern Warfare 2 Secret Old Lady WTF, which featured a fake Easter egg involving an older woman appearing from a house on the multiplayer map Underpass. Viewers were told to shoot one bullet into the top left corner of the door, two in the right, three in the bottom left, and four in the bottom right, followed by throwing a flash grenade. A lady would then appear from the door to yell at the player for making a bunch of noise before unloading a clip into their body. The editing on this video back in the day was so impressive that thousands of people rushed to their Xbox consoles to try this trick out, but were soon left with disappointment after realizing that it was just a troll. However, Sledgehammer Games kinda added the old lady into the remastered underpass map in MW3 2023. Kinda. So back when MW3 released in the fall, a few YouTubers made some videos discussing how Sledgehammer added the old lady into Modern Warfare 3. Basically, the studio implemented a door onto the old lady's house, and if you shoot each panel off of the door, it reveals a very blurry image that if you squint your eyes eyes hard enough and walk away from your computer, it almost resembles the old lady, but it, it's a stretch. However, as I was going to record some footage of Underpass from MW3 for this video, I went to check on the old lady house and, uh, well, as it turns out, Sledgehammer Games, at some point in the last few months, decided to replace the door. So I, I don't really know what's going on with that. I don't know why Sledgehammer would take the time to replace a random door on a random multiplayer map, but because they replaced the door on Underpass, it's got me putting my tinfoil hat on. Modern War Gear Solid Modern War Gear Solid is a five-part series created by the YouTube channel Boogie Beatdown, which combines the Modern Warfare 2 universe with the Metal Gear Solid universe and also Halo. I'm mentioning this series in this iceberg not just because Simon Ghost Riley is in it, but because I saw this when I was younger and I thought that it was incredible. Rewatching it recently, there are some meh moments, but I think it still holds up for the most part. It's extremely entertaining, the story is interesting, and the costumes, art, and props are outstanding. T-Posing Civilians In the campaign mission Loose Ends, there are images on the wall of the safe house which display an early version of the mission No Russian. You could tell that it's not the final build of the level because the civilians in the airport are T-Posing. However, this was later fixed in the remastered Modern Warfare 2 campaign. Price was supposed to be in Cliffhanger. According to Behind the Lines, The Art of MW2, Infinity Ward originally wanted Captain Price to be the player's climbing partner, but as the story continued to develop and grow, they decided to replace him with Soap. Battlefield Beef Call of Duty and Battlefield's rivalry and beef is no secret to anyone who plays FPS titles, but it seems like DICE and EA apparently went for Call of Duty's throat after the release of Modern Warfare 2. Battlefield Bad Company 2 released on March 1st, 2010 during MW2's life cycle, and within the game's campaign lies a couple of alleged digs at the latest Call of Duty title. Now, disclaimer, I never played Bad Company 2. Yeah, yeah I know everybody, I know, I missed out. I'll play it at some point. Anyways, I don't really know any of the characters in that game, so bear with me as I try to explain these examples. In one of the Bad Company 2 missions, one character claims that they need to clear something with a person named Braidwood, and a soldier responds by saying that Braidwood would just send in some, and I quote, special ops bags with the ass heartbeat monitors on their guns. And during the ATV portion of the campaign, one of the soldiers mentions how snowmobiles are for sissies. So these two examples seem to be referencing the Modern Warfare 2 campaign mission cliffhanger due to Soap and Roach using heartbeat sensors during the mission, as well as escaping on snowmobiles. If I'm not mistaken, I believe cliffhanger was shown prior to MW2's release during some event. So maybe the Battlefield developers saw that campaign mission, thought it was stupid, and decided to poke fun at it in their own game, which I think is pretty funny. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, I I don't know. But credit to XL Munchie LX on YouTube for uploading this footage to their channel. 
cheat code to unlock the campaign. There is a way to temporarily unlock the entire MW2 campaign along with all Spec Ops missions just by simply using a cheat code. While on the missions menu and holding RT and LT, press D-pad up, D-pad up, D-pad down, D-pad down, and then X and Y if you're on Xbox or Square, then Triangle if you're on PlayStation. And if done correctly, you will hear an audio cue followed by some yellow text on screen that reads, Cheat Enabled. All campaign and even Spec Ops missions will be unlocked. However, the game will not save your progress in these missions, online for Spec Ops will not work, and once you restart your game, the missions will be locked again. This cheat also works in the remastered MW2 campaign as well. Controversial Fight Against Grenade Spam PSA in 2009, Infinity Ward released an MW2 ad onto YouTube featuring former Philadelphia Phillies player Cole Hamels discussing random grenade spam on multiplayer and how people should avoid throwing random grenades because they suck. And they do. They're not wrong. I hate dying to random grenades. But I'm also a hypocrite because I like to throw random grenades. It's fun. The promo ends with several Semtex grenades landing on Hamels, blowing him up, followed by text on screen that reads, Funding provided by Fight Against Grenade Spam. That ad was quickly pulled from YouTube by IW due to backlash regarding the acronym for Fight Against Grenade Spam. Robert Bowling responded to the controversy on Twitter with the following, I think the core gag is great. The end is a bit too far from the intent of the joke and can appreciate the concerns. Pulled. This ad, however, has been re-uploaded several times if you're interested in checking it out. Cameo in Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. In the film Percy Jackson and the Olympians, Luke can be seen playing a Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer match on Favela, although it's worth noting that despite Luke using a PS3 controller, his TV displays Xbox buttons. 52, 61, 79, 60, 65, 4, C, 6, F, 76, 65, 73, 53, 61, 72, 61, 68. Holy crap, I got it. When using a Predator drone in Modern Warfare 2 and firing it, a hexadecimal code pops up in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And when decoded, it reads, Raimi loves Sarah. Apparently, this is a reference to former IW developer Raimi Vinson and his soon-to-be wife, Sarah. What a very romantic Easter egg. Far Cry 3 Mention While on a call with Willis Huntley, he mentions that a Russian operation is blown wide open, and that he's joining Task Force 141. If this isn't a clear reference to Call of Duty, then I don't know what is. This Russia operation's blown wide open. I'm joining Task Force 141 flying out tonight. It was nice working with you. Karachi Secrets this entry is dedicated to a few pieces of trivia about the multiplayer map Karachi, which I found pretty interesting. For starters, the map is based on the city in Pakistan. Although the official languages of the country are Urdu and English, a lot of the text around the map is in Arabic. If a player spectates the outskirts of the map, parts of the campaign mission shock and awe, oil rigs from Charlie Don't Surf, and the construction building from the multiplayer map Backlot, all from Call of Duty 4, can be seen. There are also some newspapers around the map with Infinity Ward and Call of Duty 2 on the front. Leet Train On the multiplayer map Derail, there is a train that features the number 1337 on the side. 1337 stands for Leet. The 1 is like an L, the 3s are E's, and the 7 is supposed to be a T. Now, Leet is a pretty old informal language in layman's terms because I don't want to overcomplicate things and because this is an MW2 video and not a history of Leet video. Leet is basically a funny way of spelling out words. Internet users and gamers way back in the day would replace letters with numbers or other characters that somewhat resembled letters in order to bypass censorship. I'm sure all of you guys have typed in Leet speak before because you tried making your Call of Duty clan tag a curse word. Don't worry, I've been there too. Anyways, there is a Leet train on derail and it's pretty funny. The Spinning 10th Prestige Icon Maybe you might remember jumping into an MW2 lobby and noticing that some 10th Prestige players had a spinning icon. Maybe you heard rumors that only game developers were the only ones who had access to the icon, or that you had to complete all challenges in the game, etc. 
So the spinning icon was apparently going to be a reward for completing an AK-47 related challenge that wasn't available in the game. In fact, people only know about this spinning icon because they went digging into the code. The only way a player was truly able to obtain the spinning icon was by hacking. Call of Duty Online Map Remakes Call of Duty Online was a free-to-play title only available in China. The game was basically what almost every single Call of Duty fan wants out of the franchise, which is just a combination game featuring every single map, gun, character, etc. from every sub-franchise. Anyways, in Call of Duty Online, there were several altered multiplayer maps from MW2 featured. Some of those included a map called Chemical Plant, which was just a daytime snowy version of Storm, Estate Tropical, which was just a state but with added vegetation, Favela tropical which makes zero sense to me because favela was already tropical and long rust which was just rust but expanded to the edges of earth i guess while we're on the topic of map remakes sledgehammer games decided to remake some of the classic mw2 maps in mw3 if i'm not mistaken i believe there were remakes for quarry rust and scrapyard and i think skid row and terminal are also getting retextured in this season of mw3 and they look pretty cool i'm not gonna lie and uh golly gee f***ing willigers that was layer five <laughs> i'm i'm a stealth clown they have no clue i'm even here cut end game knife fight the original ending of modern warfare 2 would have featured a knife fight between soap and general shepherd in the middle of a sandstorm I'm not even kidding. Nick Cool 2901 uploaded some footage of this cut knife fight to his channel if you want to check it out in full. Modern Warfare 2 Multiplayer Remastered exists. When Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered was announced, rumors began circulating about whether Activision would remaster more classic Call of Duties in the future. Soon enough, we began to hear rumors of a remastered MW2, but the catch was that the game wasn't going to include multiplayer. And unfortunately, that rumor ended up being true, with only the MW2 campaign being remastered and released during MW 2019's life cycle. However, it was heavily rumored that the multiplayer for MW2 Remastered was in the works before being scrapped. According to reputable leaker Tom Henderson, the remastered multiplayer was in development and the reason why it was cut from the final game was because Infinity Ward and Activision did not want Modern Warfare 2 to overshadow MW 2019. I guess Activision and IW didn't want another MWR Infinite Warfare situation where the community was just split between two games. However, according to Tom, a lot of assets from MW2 Multiplayer Remastered were apparently going to come into MW2 2022, and uh, uh well yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, I guess that didn't happen, but anyways, hey, we have all 16 base MW2 maps in Modern Warfare 3 2023, and uh, Jesus Christ, the names of these games are starting to get very confusing to me. The doll. Do I even need to explain this one? Just go on a state or loose ends in MW2 and check out the bathroom in Makarov's safe house. I think what's kind of funny is that the doll was eventually replaced in the remastered estate in Modern Warfare 3 2023. But damn, what an awkward moment playing this campaign in my living room as a kid. Ghost is still alive. Look, we've all seen the fan theories regarding how Ghost totally survived Shepard's Bullet and Firestorm, correct? So back in the day, Mr. Boss for the win, or, uh... <laughs> Boss man, fuck the world. According to Ned Luke, the voice actor of Michael from Grand Theft Auto V, uploaded a video discussing how Ghost could have survived the ordeal at the end of the campaign mission, Loose Ends. It's honestly a pretty interesting video that provides some good points. And you know, I, I give Ross a lot of shit for his constant spam Grand Theft Auto V and VI uploads and his very clickbaity titles, but this video was probably one of the very few videos he uploaded that I, I genuinely enjoyed. So I'll give credit where credit is due. But I will say that despite the many rumors in the community, and I, I hate being this guy, I feel like a terrible doctor, but look, Ghost in the original Modern Warfare trilogy died at the end of Loose Ends. There's just no denying it. It happened, he's dead. He's still alive in this one though. <laughs> MW2 failed to be MW2. 
Again, confusing names. I feel like Activision and Infinity Ward were really betting on MW2 2022, blowing the entire franchise out of the water and being exactly, if not more, memorable than MW2 2009 based on the name alone. And the hype train was real at the time, but uh, god. They really lit the boat on fire, and sank it, and then shot the ocean with a ballistic missile. I could talk about my disgust for Modern Warfare 2 2022 all day every day, but I won't bore you guys in this video. Maybe one day I'll make like a 5 hour long video just talking about why I hate MW2 2022 so much. Although I don't think 5 hours would really be enough time to tell you guys just how much I hate it. <laughs> Anyways, IW fumbled the bag and there will never be a better MW2 than the original. Ghost is Gaz. Years ago, I read some rumors online about how Gaz somehow survived the events of COD 4 and came back as Ghost, and one of the pieces of evidence to support that rumor was that Gaz's voice actor, Craig Fairbrass, also voiced Simon Ghost Riley in MW2. Obviously, that rumor isn't true, but it's really cool that Activision gave Craig another shot in the Modern Warfare universe. Uh, oh god, yikes. <laughs> what a I just realized what I said. Oh, what a terrible joke. I gotta go take a walk after that one. No. In the mission Wolverines, in the original MW2 2009, there is an Infinity Ward logo on the side of a building in the alleyway. Now normally this wouldn't be a big deal considering that IW likes to graffiti their logo into certain parts of their games. However, this logo was removed in the remastered MW2 campaign and replaced with the word NO. Maybe because Beanox was mostly responsible for remastering the campaign and they decided to replace the logo with NO as a joke. Or, and this is just a tinfoil hat theory, Maybe Beanox doesn't like IW, but you know, I doubt that. The Alien Doll from Extinction In the campaign mission Wolverines on the stairs of a house, there is a clown and an alien doll having a tea party. What's pretty bizarre besides the fact that an alien doll and a clown doll are having a tea party during an invasion is that the stuffed alien doll is from Call of Duty Ghosts, specifically the game mode Extinction. Now, to my knowledge, this alien doll isn't featured in the original MW2, so Beanox literally just took the alien model and shoved it into the remastered campaign, and I think that's pretty funny. Favela Band a few years after the release of MW2, Activision and IW removed the multiplayer map Favela from the multiplayer rotation for a brief period. Inside of a bathroom on the map laid two pictures with a quote which read, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Now according to YouTuber Khaled Kuwait Forever, it's disrespectful to say or write anything about Islam in bathrooms. Activision then released a statement stating that they apologized to anyone who found the image offensive. They also claimed to be unaware aware of the issue and that their intent wasn't to offend or upset anyone. They then stated that they were working to remove the image and any other similar pictures from various games in their library. While the developers were working on a title update to fix the issue, not just in MW2 but also to remove the texture entirely from MW3 as well, the map Favela was pulled. Once the fix was implemented, the map returned to rotation soon after. However, according to some people on Reddit, IW forgot to put Favela back into the Steam version of the multiplayer rotation, which I think is really funny. 11th Prestige I just want to take this entry to quickly salute all of my uh, MW2 11th Prestige Masters. Uh, thank you guys for your service. Man, I hope one day Activision decides to bring back the classic prestige system instead of the seasonal prestiges we've been getting for the last few years. I just miss ranking up to level 55 and then being able to reset myself and then do that like 10 more times. I don't know why, but that's way more fun than constantly leveling up until I hit a max cap and then I have to wait until the next season to start again. All gillied up outside of Hidden. A YouTube channel by the name of Let's Play Community released a video back in 2012 which features Nick explaining how MW2 players can glitch out of the Spec Ops mission Hidden and be transported to the campaign level all gillied up from COD 4. Mr. Yuck. 
A Mr. Yuck logo can be seen on both the WA-2000 and the Barrett 50 cal sniper rifles inside of their lens caps. Now Mr. Yuck is basically an image created by the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh back in 1971 to help children learn about how to not eat poison. It was basically the logo that replaced the traditional skull and crossbones logo which used to represent poison which by the way I think we need to bring that logo back because it was pretty metal. Why Mr. Yuck is featured inside of these two lens caps is beyond me, but it's still a pretty interesting Easter egg. Photo of Girl in Wolverines in the original MW2 campaign on the Mission Wolverines, there is an image of a girl inside of the vehicle, and in the remastered campaign, there is a photo of an entirely different girl in the vehicle. I tried looking into who these people are, but I couldn't find anything concrete. Maybe these are the relatives of a couple of developers who worked on the original and remastered Wolverines level. That's just my educated guess though. Maybe one of you guys can let me know in the comments below if you know anything about this. Modern Warfare, the Captain Price Collection. This is just wishful thinking, but I would love it if Microsoft decided to push out a Modern Warfare Remastered Trilogy Collection with every single campaign, multiplayer, and Spec Ops experience. The only reason why I'm bringing this up is because Microsoft now owns Activision Blizzard. And look, if Microsoft can put out a Halo Master Chief Collection with every single Halo campaign and multiplayer experience, then maybe, just maybe, They'll put out a package featuring MWR, MW2R with multiplayer and spec ops, and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, a remaster of MW3 with multiplayer and spec ops as well. Again, wishful thinking, but I don't think it's 100% crazy to imagine. Soap dies in cliffhanger. The worldwide reveal trailer for Modern Warfare 2 shows a clip of Soap getting gunned down in the cliffhanger mission. Now, this only happens if Roach doesn't detonate the C4 in time, but it's interesting to see the game trailer show a failed mission scene. Maybe to throw people off? There's also a checkpoint reach in the trailer, which I, I think is really funny. Look, it was 2009. Not everything was perfect, so I'll give them some credit. Roach claps Shepard. In an alternate timeline, Price managed to warn Ghost and Roach about Shepard's betrayal in time, therefore altering the events of MW2. Uh, if only we lived in a perfect world. Credit to AF Guides HD for this video. I'm a stealth clown. This did not need to be the final entry in this iceberg, mainly because it's not obscure in the slightest. It's just, it's very common. I think everybody knows about the I'm a stealth clown meme, but like we got to end it on a nonsensical note. Like just picking guys off. And I love that because it was a perfect moment of like, they have no clue I'm even here. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. 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 Player 6 is done, the video's done, I'm going to bed. I'm, I'm a stealth clown. They have no clue I'm even here. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Modern Warfare 2 Iceberg. I had a load of fun putting this massive video together, and I'm very much looking forward to covering Call of Duty Black Ops next. If you guys enjoyed this video, and you learned something new, or you're feeling generous today, then please leave a like on the video. Let's try and hit at least 75 likes. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new here as well, and want to see more icebergs, reviews, deep dives, and more. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and feel free to join my Discord server. Links are in the bio below. Have a great day everyone, but please remember to always check your ACS module.